Hey everybody, today's video is to celebrate all of the amazing books I have on my shelf that have come out so far this year. I have said it and I will say it again, 2021 is going to be a fantastic year for reading. So I want to make sure that all of the books that I was excited about in this first quarter have already wound up on your TBR or on your bookshelf. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are well. I hope you are healthy. I hope you are happy. I hope you are safe. And as always, I hope you are reading a book or two or three or four. Today in Northern California feels like the first day of summer. It is a fantastically beautiful day outside. It is tank top weather. It is phenomenal. We took the dogs on a long walk this morning. They are just passed out. They are not going to move for many an hour. They are snoring to their heart's content. So that means that we're taking a kind of a relaxing Sunday afternoon to ourselves as well. Today I thought I would start a different sort of way of wrapping up the books that have come out year to date. I used to do a video every month, but then they were different lengths. They were different types of structure because of the amount of books that I came in. So in 2021, every quarter, I'm going to do a video where I talk about the books that have come out. Now, I've probably read a good portion of them. Of course, I can't read everything that's come in, but I can tell you about how excited I am to read them because 21, 2021 is going to be an amazing reading year. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, order a book or two from your local independent bookstore. All these books are out. You can get your hands on them as we speak. And if you're a library user, get your library to get you a copy as soon as possible. Now, this is not a review video. I'm gonna try to be sweet and short and succinct um, because I can talk about the ones I've read probably a lot because I love them, but I'm going to try to keep it sweet. If you're looking for a full-on review video for me, look in my wrap-ups um, for the ones that I have read and you'll see um, my more detailed thoughts. So let's get started. Actually, the book that I am currently reading right now is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This is out for Orbit. Big thank you to all of the publishers I'm going to mention because they've all sent me most of these. I think, yeah, most of these they sent me or I bought my own copy after they sent me a um, ARC. So The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, epic fantasy series. We have a major um, country that is coming around and sort of conquering the world. Our main character is a young female soldier who at a very young age was stolen from her land and is now back after 20 years because the kingdom has been um, come to this territory to quell the rebellion. Our main character hasn't been home in 20 years and she's sort of been, it's sort of been beating out of her that she would ever want to return home. She's part of um, this military force and she should belong to it full heartedly. Our other main character is a princess who wants to be queen who has arrived with the um, desire to prove herself and quell the rebellion as well. There's queer representation, there is political intrigue, there's a fantastic world building but it's not too complicated because if you know me I don't like too complicated world building but I am totally obsessed with this book so far. So that's The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. I believe this is the first in a series. So I think if I love this one, I have a lot to do. And again, out now, you can get your hands on it. Epic fantasy. Let's go. The next book is The Hair by Melanie Flynn. This book I read from my book club, and it is a fantastic book club choice. This is the story of Rose, I believe. She starts the book as Rosie. She is at the beginning of the book, she's a young woman. She gets sort of entranced by this man with like this life that she thinks is so exotic. Turns out he's on the wrong side of the law. Very young, she winds up getting pregnant. They have to run away because of something that happens. I'm not going to ruin anything because this is like a little bit of a mystery thriller. She winds up having her baby and living in like this rural part of Vermont. Things continue to go bad for her. The husband winds up getting arrested, disappears, comes back. All sorts of stuff happen. But the book really focuses on Rose and the work and decisions and things she is willing to do to raise her child and then also 
just be herself moving forward. This book will take you on a ride, I'm telling you right now. So this is The Hair by Melanie Flynn. This is out from $2 Press. And um, yeah, I actually really like this. And if you are looking for a book club uh, book that will just keep you guys talking for hours, that's one. Um, the short story collection Kink, by, edited by R.O. Kwan and Garth Greenwell. This is a collection of short stories from a very variety group of authors. Um, every story is different in its intent, and it's sort of celebration and or discussion of different sexual proclivities that make people who they are. And I think it is a daring collection because it really looks at um, sexual kinks in a different way. And I say sexual kinks, I think there's societal, it's like so complicated, but every story is amazing. There's a story from Roxane Gay, Brandon Taylor, Carmen Maria Machado, R.L. Kwan, Garth Greenwell, all phenomenal, phenomenal talents. And also there are stories by people that I had never um, been introduced to and I was totally blown away and started um, buying. Oh, there's also a story by Alexander Chi that is very, very good in this. Um, but yeah, other authors too that I hadn't heard of that I was super excited to now go get their other work. So this is Kink Stories edited by R.L. Kwan and Garth Greenwell. Definitely worth your time. A book that I absolutely loved, The Raw, uh, the Rain Heron by Robbie Arnett. I tried to make it The Robbie Heron. That didn't make any sense. This is out from FSG, and this is so good. Sort of like a dystopian, mythical, I'm going to say fantasy, but it's not exactly fantasy. But we have um, this the story of the rain heron, which is sort of this mythic tale of this bird that came to this land, and when it came, it prospered. And then one day, someone tried to capture him, the rain heron, it disappeared and prosperity disappeared. Now we're in this future world where things are sort of going awry. Um, the book does a fantastic time job of just giving you enough um, where the military has come to this mountainside to find the rain heron, and this woman, um, who knows about it is sort of taken hostage to deliver it. And this is this, really the story of these two different women, one, the leader of the soldiers, and the other, this woman who lives on the mountain and um, you know celebrates the nature and how this all comes together. And then it just becomes a straight on dystopian sort of thriller narrative. And it is so good. The characters are great. You shift perspectives. You get a lot of Backstory story and then future story and it's so so good so that's the rain heron by Robbie arnett i need to reach out and get some more of his stuff i think flames was his book, last book i don't know if it ever came out in the u.s but i need his stuff it's very very good okay brood by um jackie polzin this is out from doubleday i love this book this is a quiet book about a woman dealing with grief by ra and by raising a group of chickens in her backyard. You learn a lot about raising chickens in this book, but you also learn about sort of those maternal instincts and, you know, sadness and loss and I'm um, just dealing with the world when something happens. I'm not going to tell you what, because of course I don't want to spoil, but um, what happens really drives her to sort of put her maternal instinct somewhere else. And it's these chickens. And as things happen to them, her life is changing. It's a very meditative book. So that's Brood by Jackie Polzin. This is so good. This cover is beautiful from Doubleday. I absolutely love this book. Okay. Next is, I need to get my finished copy of 3 o'clock in the morning by um, Gianrico Carofiglio, out from Harper Via, translated, what is the translator's name? Howard Curtis. This is another book that just sort of sits in my sweet spot. Um, this is the story of a young boy. Um, at the beginning of the book, he's 15 years old. He's diagnosed with epilepsy. And he is told by the doctor that he has to return in three years to see how the medication is taken. And maybe he'll be over, like he'll have recovered from his epilepsy. So he and his father, who he's rather been estranged from since the divorce from his mother, wind up going to Marseille to see this doctor. And the doctor says, you have to stay up for 48 hours. And in doing so, so we'll see whether or not you have another fit, a seizure or whatever, to determine whether or not epilepsy is going to be something you have to deal with for the rest of your life. 
What happens is it becomes a story of a father and a son getting to know each other again and really having the conversations that really brighten their perspective on one another. And it is just heart-wrenching. It's so sweet. Um, it is sad at the end. I'm going to tell you it did cause some tears, but I loved this book and I had it was nowhere on my radar and it is perfect. It is so good. It's a Russell book. So if you ever say you're a Russell reader, this is the book for you. So Three O'Clock in the Morning by Gianricchio Carofiglio, out from Harper Via, and translated by Howard Curtis. So good. Okay. In the Quick by Kate Hope Day, out from a Random House. I actually um, ordered this from Kate Hope Day's local bookstore so that I could have it signed and sent to me. In the Quick is a sci-fi sort of I'm going to say it's a small retelling of Jane Eyre because I think it's more than just a retelling of it. But um, it's about a, a young girl. She's like 12 when the book starts. Um, and there's a spaceship has gone missing. And she lives with um, her uncle and aunt because her parents have passed. And she was really close to her uncle. And her uncle was an engineer who created these fuel packs or um, that were on that spaceship and sort of got the blame for why this ship went missing. And she just doesn't buy it. She's very difficult as a child and she winds up going to this school where at the end of it, you either become an astronaut or the people that support the astronauts. And she's sort of a brilliant mind. It's got sort of like a school narrative, like a campus novel narrative at times, but really it's a sci-fi book about a girl who turns into a woman who is going to do what she can to find the ship. We wind up going into space, we wind up, you know, there's this tech aspect to it. There's about relationships. And it's also just about the love of a young girl for her uncle and trying to sort of set the story straight and bring the ship home. Um, I need there to be a sequel. That's all I'm going to say. I really enjoyed it. It's a great audiobook. I read, listened to the audio as I read it and I thought it was fantastic. So that's In the Quick by Kate Hope Day out from Random House. You see what happens here is that I start talking about these books and then I'm like, I'm going to make this short and sweet. And then I can't because I love them so much. Probably one of my top five favorite reads of the year, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is the story of a young, <laughs> I say young, artificial friend um, named Clara who gets purchased by a young girl and sort of how their relationship continues to develop as Clara becomes sort of a reflection of the relationships, not only in the family which she is brought into, but also in society as we learn about what's sort of going on. It's got this weird sort of like slightly off center dystopian vibe to it, but it works so well. I think that Clara and the Sun has gotten some very interesting reviews from other people. I buy into it because I think Kazuya Shiguro has sort of this Dist, um, distanced narrative style that really works for me as a reader. And I love that he leaves a lot of stuff to imagination. I was fascinated by Clara as she developed throughout the book. Um, and I just like what he said about the world and relationships and loss and um, love and all of that kind of stuff. So Clara and the Sun, Kaju Ishiguro, Girl, you know, he's a genius. So it's hard to say anything bad about him, but I really, really loved him. A book I didn't expect to love as much as I did was Let's Get Back to the Party by Zach Zali. This is out from Algonquin Books. This is the story of two gay men. At the, in the book, they're sort of probably in like their 30s. They used to know each other when they were very young, and they have two very different perspectives on being a gay man. Um, and what ha we have Oscar, I believe his name is Oscar. Yes, Oscar, who takes sort of like this lack of commitment, lack of attachment perspective. He also feels very protective of queer spaces, but his sort of sort of standoffishness until he meets an older gay writer who sort of creates the first relationship that he cares about. Our other protagonist is Sebastian, who has just gotten out of a relationship. He is a teacher and he meets a young student who is sort of unapologetically queer and he sort of envies that um, and wishes he sort of had that freedom. But they're both very lost on what to do next in their life. And that's sort of very much what the story is. And I thought it was beautifully written. I thought both characters were very real. I know both of them in my life. I had parts of my own experience in them as a gay man. I thought this book was very, very good. So that's Let's Get Back to the Party by Zach Zali. Okay, out from Algonquin Books. Now we're going to do the books that I haven't read. 
So uh, that was all books that I've read. That's pretty good, I think, for the first half of the year. Um, let's talk about Silence is a Sense by Layla Alamar out from Algonquin. This is about a young woman who travels to the UK from Syria, I believe. Yes, Syria. She sort of um, goes into recluse, reclusion? Reclusion. She just sits in her uh, hotel, her hotel, her apartment, and she writes under the name of, let me remember, The Voiceless. And she just takes a long time to sort of get to be a member of her community because of what she's come from, war-torn war Syria. She's very sort of just reclusive because she's just scared. But then she starts to branch out into her community, an act of utter terrorism happens in her community, and she has to make a decision again. Does she go back? Does she pull back again? Or does she fight with her community and, be, you know, sort of let her voice be known and develop these relationships? So I'm really excited about this one. I think it sounds fantastic. Silence is a Sense by Leila Alamar out from Algonquin Books. Okay. I've talked about this one a couple times on my channel. Love is an Next Country by Rhonda Jarrar. This is out from Catapult. This is a memoir about a woman. I, I'm just going to tell you, it says in the, the front here that she's queer, Muslim, Arab American, and proudly fat. And she um, gets infatuated with this idea of, of this story of this Egyptian belly dancer that crossed the United States during the 40s or the 50s. I can't remember. 40s. And um, she decides to make that road trip as she's going home. And as she does so, she starts to tell her story as well. Um, I, this is one of my most anticipated reads of the year. So why I haven't read it now is just because the world is busy. But I think it sounds fantastic. And that's Love is the Next Country by Rhonda Gerard out from Catapult. Okay. Um, I am going to be reading this really soon because I am reading um, Naima Coaster's first book from my other book club. So that's super exciting. And this is What's Mine and Yours by Naima Coaster out from Grand Central Station. This, and I love this cover so much. This is a story um, of integration of a school system in a community in North Carolina. We sort of focus on two young students, two that come over to a predominantly white school and their parents and sort of the fight and issues that arise from this school integration. The school decides to put on a play in an attempt to sort of quell the um, turmoil and these two young uh, protagonists get uh, come together and they sort of never are able therefore after to get out of each other's lives. Um, I'm yeah, so I'm really excited about this one, too, because I want to read Halsey Street first because we're reading it for my book club. It has been sort of put on the back burner, but that is only because I think in a couple of months I'll have read all of her work. So What's Mine and Yours, Naomi Coster, out from Grand Central Publishing. Super, super thrilled. Another book that I've talked about quite a bit is Superhost by Kate Russo. This is the story of a young He's not young. I don't know why I said that. He is a middle-aged artist whose life is sort of falling apart. His art was very popular. It's going out of style for, you know, how things do. Um, his wife has just left him. He's trying to figure out how he's going to maintain a living. So he moves into the building behind his house, which is his art studio, and rents out his, his house to people. And it is about those relationships, those people that come in, developing relationships, and how to move on, you know, after your words, world sort of tumbles apart. So that's Superhost by Kate Russo out from Putnam. And um, yeah, so there's so many books, you guys, and they're all so good. And I still have a stack to tell you about. I'm just telling you, this video is going to be far, fairly long. Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. This is the one that I probably know the least about on this list. But Martha is our main character. You know, she had she has had a lot of ups in her life. But right now she's going through a bunch of downs. And it says... Because um, her husband has just moved out. She lives in a community where she doesn't really want to be. She used to work for Vogue and she doesn't work for Vogue anymore because there's something wrong with her, the back says, and has been for a long time. When she was 17, a little bomb went off in her brain and she has never been the same. 
After countless doctors, endless therapy, and e every kind of drug later, she still doesn't know what's wrong, why she spends days unable to get out of bed or alienates both strangers and her loved ones with casually cruel remarks. So she winds up going home, has to interact again with her parents and her sister, but her sister's sort of given up on her because of all of this as well. I've heard that this book deals with mental health in a very interesting way um, and that people really can see themselves a lot in this book. So um, yeah, it sounds fascinating. So that's Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason out from Harper. Okay, so Milk Feed by Melissa Broder is one of those books that I have started actually a couple of times, um, but haven't just been in the right headspace for. Milk Fed is the story of a young woman who is obsessed with her weight, and that is done mainly because of her mother. And what happens is her therapist sort of entices her not to worry about her weight for a short period of time, you know, sort of put a part, that part of her away. And she winds up meeting a young woman who takes her on an adventure, changes her perspective on the world. Now, what I love about a Melissa Broder novel is that her characters are always messy, but they're always so grounded in a sense of reality to me. Um, and you, to me, you have to be in the right mind space to love a Melissa Broder novel. And I think I will love this one when I'm ready for it. So that's Milk Fed by Melissa Broder out from Scribner. Okay. If you are looking for a sci-fi, queer, romance, empire novel, Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell may be the book for you. This is this just has such a cute premise, but it's like two princes. One is the like least favorite grandchild of the person in power. The other is a, now a widow, and they're going to have to be married to save the empire. Do you need more than that? I don't think you need more than that. It just sounds like it's going to be fun. So that's Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. This is out from Tor. You can get your hands on it right now. All of these, I keep saying that, but there you go. Um, the Center of Everything by Jamie Harrison out from uh, Counterpoint Press. This is a story of a woman in Montana who has had some sort of um, accident, a head injury, which has made it difficult for her to sort of have perspective. She sort of gets mixed up about what's the past, what's the current, and sort of all of it comes together. One, uh, it's July 4th weekend, her whole family has come to visit, and one of her friends goes missing. And in the search for her friend, as all of this is going on, with her memories, things sort of start to come to, to clarity, maybe the right word. So that's The Center of Everything by Jamie Harrison, out now from Counterpoint. Um, this book was sent to me by Amazon Publishing, and sometimes publishers will send me a book and I'll be like, they, they know me? And this is like a book that's just like, they know me. At the End of the Matinee by Ke Kichiro Hirano, and I probably am saying that wrong, translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. So this is a story of two people. One is a um, world famous guitarist and the other one is a news reporter. And they meet at the end of one of the um, performances by the guitarist. And they create a relationship and continue to have a conversation, a conversation that goes on and off over years. And they don't really realize the relationship that they've created through having this conversation. I think this is going to be like one of those quiet books about people that Russell absolutely loves. So this just arrived not that long ago. So that's At the End of the Matinee by Ki Kichiro Hirano, translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. Okay, just two more, y'all. Brother, Sister, Mother, Explorer by um, Jamie Figueroa out from Catapult. This is the story of um, siblings, a brother and a sister, whose mother has just died. And the, son, the brother is struggling. He sort of wants to end his life. He doesn't know where he's going to go next. So the sister convinces him that they're going to sort of do the, the um, performances in public. And if they earn enough money, they will flee where they live. And I think the city is called... Um, Cuidad de Tres Hermanas, um, they're going to flee there, and then he will not think about sort of ending his life ever again. However, if they don't make enough money to flee, um, she will allow him to do what he wants to do and be supportive. Um, and that's sort of the deal that's made. So that's Brother, Sister, Mother Explorer by Jamie Figueroa, out from Catapult. 
Okay, last but not least, Raft of Stars by Andrew J. Graff. This is the story of two young boys. They come from really, really rough families. And one day, one of the boys gets tired of the way that the other boy's father is treating him. So he get, fires a gun. And they assume that they have killed the father. So they run into the forest to flee. And this is the story of four adults that have gone into the forest to find them and how all of that is going to come together in a relationship. Um, I just bought my official copy of this because I have a feeling this is going to be one of my favorite reads of 2021. I am so excited about it. So this one is out from Echo. You can get your hands on it right now. Raft of Stars, Andrew J. Groff, there for you. Get your hands on it. That is quite a stack of books, y'all. So thank you for sticking around for what's going to be a 25 minute video. I'm sorry I talked so long. As always, if you are a new subscriber, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope you stick around. If you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye.